Thank you. I am Jewish. I am Buddhist. I have a Jewish and a Buddhist koan for you tonight. A koan is a paradoxical story. It doesn't have a bright line morality. It doesn't have an aha moment like we're used to, uh, like in the, in the great stories we've heard tonight. Um, the idea of a koan is to put you into an intuitive way of thinking, to sit and meditate, to get into your imaginative logic versus your deductive logic. Uh, this is pointed to in a famous Buddhist chant, the Prajnaparamita Gata. Uh, gate, gate, paragate, parasamgate, bodhisvaha. Gone, gone, gone beyond, gone way beyond rational mind, there is awakening. So a famous uh, koan, um, you've heard of uh, the sound of two hands clapping, what is the sound of one hand? Um, so there are things like this that might not make sense on their face, but we're to contemplate. Let me give a little history of Buddhism. So the historical Buddha, Siddhartha Gautama, realized that suffering is caused by karma, by the cycles of cause and effect, and that we can escape that through awakening, through sitting meditation. So that's a basic tenet of uh, Buddhism. Buddhism was uh, for about a thousand years exclusively in India. And then around the fifth century, Bodhidharma, an Indian Buddhist monk, traveled to China, up and over to China, and brought uh, what became a melded Taoism and Buddhism, Zen Buddhism, to China. It flourished there for centuries until we get to the 12th century um, where they remember the Bodhidharma. He was called a barbarian because he came from another land um, and had a red beard, the red bearded barbarian. So our story takes place. The koan is called Pei Chong's Fox. It takes place in the 12th century. Pei Chong was the head monk, the abbot of a beautiful monastery. It sat on a small mountain surrounded by pine trees. The monastery itself was aged pine that had this golden dark color to it. Every day, Pei Chang would give a Dharma talk, a talk about the nature of reality to the monks. He would notice in the back of the room that there was a man he didn't recognize. Every day the talk would end, the monks would leave and the man will have disappeared. Today, Pei Chang finishes his talk and sees the man still sits there. He walks up to him. Who are you? I'm not a human. I used to be the abbot of this very monastery. One day, somebody came up to me and asked me, please tell me, when a person is awakened, do they fall under the laws of cause and effect? I told that person, no, they don't. Since then, I've been reborn as a wild fox 500 lifetimes. Please, Pei Chang, give me a turning word, a word that can bring me to enlightenment and stop the rebirth as a fox. Tell me, does an awakened person fall under the laws of cause and effect. Pei Chong thinks and answers, an awakened person does not evade the laws of cause and effect. With that, the old man was awakened. He said, please do me a favor, Pei Chong. Will you give me a monk's burial? You'll find my body out behind the meditation hall in front of a boulder. He agreed. After the man left, oh, a seven foot tall, red haired, red bearded man, and said, Huang Bo, gather everybody and prepare them to give a monk's funeral. Said, but no monks have died. But please, just do as I'm asking. 
So Huang Bo gathers everyone. They go back behind the meditation hall. Pei Chong pokes around with a stick and finds the body of a dead fox. They cremate the fox and give it a monk's funeral. That night in the meditation hall, Pei Chong tells the story of what happened that day. Huang Bo asks, tell me, you tell of a teacher of old who was reborn 500 lifetimes as a fox. What if he had not given the wrong answer? Pei Chang said, come here, Huang Bo. Come closer and I will tell you. Huang Bo walks up to Pei Chang and Huang Bo <laughs> slaps Pei Chang across the face. <laughs> Pei Chang laughs and claps his hands. I thought the barbarian had a red beard. Lo and behold, before me is a red bearded barbarian. That's a Zen koan. That's something that uh, as a Zen student, I will study and have to uh, answer to, to my uh, Zen teachers. Let me tell you a Jewish koan. It wouldn't necessarily be called a koan, but I think you'll see the point. And let me tell you, in Judaism, there are 613 mitzvot, commandments, good deeds um, that you're supposed to do. Some of them are following the Shabbat, the day of rest. Um, and all of those mitzvot are superseded um, for what's called pekuach nefesh, um, to save a life. So if there's ever a time when there's a life that can be saved. Maybe someone is starving to death or dying of thirst. That becomes, you can break all the other mitzvot, the commandments, the good deeds to save that person's life. So with that in mind, let me tell you a story that Reb Nachman, uh, this is Rabbi Nachman, who is the great grandson of the Baal Shem Tov, the founder of um, Jewish mysticism, of Hasidism in the 1700s. One Shabbat, he told this story. The mysterious painting. There was a king who traveled to another land and saw a beautiful palace. He wanted one for himself. He came back home and he hired the best artisans and craftspeople who built him an even more beautiful palace. So beautiful was it and magnificent that people came from afar to see it. One day, Shmuel and Joe decided they would travel from a faraway city to come see this magnificent palace. They're traveling to the palace, and they finally arrive. As they approach, they see above the gate a painting. It's extraordinary. It seems to come to life. They see a spring on each side of the road. There's a guard in front of each spring. There's a beggar who approaches, dying of thirst. He's pushed away by the guards. They won't give him water. Then a carriage approaches. There's a gentleman in it. He asks for water. The taller of the guards gets a glass of water and carries it to the gentleman. He drinks. As he does that, the shorter guard gives the beggar a drink of water. When the tall guard sees this, he grabs a bucket of hot ashes and pours it over the head of the shorter guard. That's not fair, screams Joe. Upon hearing this, Shmuel turns to Joe and slaps him in the face. They start arguing. Soon, a man approaches them and says, The king wants to see you. In front of the king, the king asks, why did you slap your companion? He said, he insulted a painting of the king, therefore insulting the king. He looks at Joe and says, why did you say this isn't fair? He said, I, I was looking at the painting and there was a man dying of thirst. They wouldn't give him water. And then one of the guards pours hot ashes over the other guard for giving him water. It seemed to me unfair. He looks back to Shmuel. Tell me again, why did you slap your companion? 
It was necessary to give water to the gentleman. It was not necessary to give water to the beggar. That's the story that Reb Nachman told. So here we have a Zen koan, a Jewish koan, um, two stories that seem to go against the very tenets of these religions that I hold very dear. And so uh, for me, it's a matter of sitting with those um, in an imaginative way. Um, and I hope that in hearing those, um, that you will notice, I sure do, the paradoxes of life um, and that in some way you may be able to take those paradoxes, sit with them um, in a way that's meaningful to you. So I bow to um, the God spark in you. I bow to the Buddha nature in us all. Thank you. Thank you.